Works this week is made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities and is made possible by the generous support of our members. Thank you. His watercolors have drama and the colors almost explode. Apparently I, ha I have this reputation of being the, uh, the bad boy of watercolor. We examine the unconventional style of artist Nicholas Simmons. Welcome to Artworks This Week, I'm Rhea Feiken. Today we look at some artists, young and old, who go to places we don't expect and return with creative interpretations that surprise and delight. Our first story is about an artist who likes to break the rules. Nicholas Simmons is a watercolorist whose colors are intense, whose subjects range from flamenco dancers to fish to soldiers, and who particularly seems to enjoy shaking up an area of the art world that is, well, not used to being shaken up. We couldn't resist catching up with his high energy talent. Apparently I, ha I have this reputation of being the, uh, the bad boy of watercolor. I'm not sure exactly why that is except that I have bucked convention and a lot of the traditional techniques and theories about watercolor For really centuries, watercolor was sort of considered a precursor to the oil painting. An oil painter would do a watercolor study before they did the actual oil painting. Now that's starting to change because new materials come in, new techniques, and people see that watercolor as a viable medium to do big, you know, showcase type serious uh, pieces of art. And that's what I'm trying to do. What's so attractive about watercolor to me is its elusive nature. There are people who work very, very hard to control it. And to me, that's really working against the grain with watercolor. I prefer to let the water kind of do what it wants and let the paint do what it wants uh, with the water and only control it enough to make the picture happen. That's one thing about having a music background, especially if you're an improviser. You have to be, uh, you know, make those split-second decisions, you know, uh, you know, while everything's happening, and uh, not get too nervous or too freaked out if something doesn't go well. Uh, some people have difficulty working that way. They have to have a set idea from the beginning, and that's what they go with. I like to stay more open-minded and flexible, and if the painting seems like it wants to go somewhere else, I just go along for the ride. So that's, to me, what's so attractive about watercolor is it's got a life of its own. The oil painter actually has to paint every little thing that you see on the canvas. It's very deliberate. In watercolor, the water is the vehicle and it does things on its own and if you allow it some of the things it does on its own you know an oil painter couldn't replicate in a million years and it takes a long time to, to get the confidence to do that and the trust what's interesting about it there's some control involved but you're also kind of letting it do its own thing and somewhere in there there's a balance between the artist and the medium. What I really like to see in paintings is some sort of combination, uh, some sort of melding of abstraction and realism. What draws my eye is some unusual perspective. If it can be a realistic subject, fine, but I like to see it from maybe an abstract viewpoint. If it's an abstract painting, I like to see something realistic in there that can give me a few clues to what's going on. There's something different to look at with each one. Everyone's a different little experience. Mm -hmm. 